Uh, good to see everyone. Uh, good afternoon. It's uh, uh, enjoyed driving up today, seeing the, the turf in Gate City being torn up, the tree line down, uh, a lot of work getting done on that new indoor facility. So uh, uh, exciting, uh, exciting day for football and for NDSU athletics. Uh, good win this weekend. I think you saw a team that uh, uh, throughout the entire week we challenged them to maintain their edge, uh, maintain the advantage that we created through fall camp and through the first couple weeks of the, of the academic year uh, with how we practice and the detail and the effort that we were putting into things. Uh, we were able to run the football. We were able to consistently uh, stay out of uh, really uh, very many third and long or long yardage situations. Uh, I thought Tyler Roll did a great job of minimizing the game plan. Valpo had shown to be a team defensively that would bring a ton of pressure at different times during the course of, of a game. And so we, we repped that at a, at a high level. Uh, and, and I thought Coach Roll did a great job of really simplifying it, making sure that we were good with our inside zone, outside zone, and some of our gap scheme throughout the course of the game. Uh, ball security was something we emphasized uh, from week one to week two. Uh, we'll continue to emphasize it. It's critical. The ball is the program. Uh, and then you're just 11 different players uh, carrying the football. We dressed roughly 80 uh, student athletes for Saturday, and I think the majority, uh, if not all of them, played uh, during the course of the game. So that was positive. Defensively, uh, still creating those takeaways. Um, it was important at the end of the game to get the shutout. And you could hear the talk. You could hear the, uh, the players on the sideline, the starters, uh, encouraging uh, the, the, the younger players or the backups to get out there and, and maintain that zero. That's something that doesn't happen very often in college athletics or in college football. And so for those guys to be able to maintain that shutout was critical. Uh, and then, you know, we were able to stop the run. And any time you can do that, you have the ability to pin your ears back and get going up front. Uh, I thought our kids played well. We were able to, to spell a lot of guys. I know from just looking at, the, at some of the numbers, we had offensive linemen that were playing only 16, 18, 19 snaps, and, and that's a good thing. Uh, they got all the preparation. They got, they got to get going. They got to score. They got some drives in, but then we got them out, and then we got to start developing our younger, our younger players. And our younger players had you know, two 10-play drives. Uh, that, that, that's critical in our development, especially within our program, where we, we rely on young players working their way through the program until they can become starters or become uh, you know, on that first group and get out there. So this is great experience for us. Uh, we got a big challenge this week, not only Towson, uh, a very good CAA football team, uh, but our first road game. Uh, you know, all the challenges of, of heading not only just a, a three-hour flight, you lose an hour on the travel, uh, it, we're going to leave a little bit earlier than maybe uh, a, a typical game in the Midwest, but uh, home opener for them, so anticipate a big crowd. Uh, it, it'll be fun. Uh, it's what college football is supposed to be like. Uh, it's the thing that we missed in the spring, uh, having uh, big crowds uh, even at opponent stadiums. Uh, but we're looking forward to it. It'll be a good challenge for us, and I'm sure uh, they'll be hungry to play the Bison. Uh, with that, I'll, I'll open it up to questions. Matt, do you anticipate seeing two quarterbacks from Towson? They played two, I know, last week. Uh, I, think, I think we'll be prepared uh, if we do see two. I didn't, from watching the game earlier, Dom, I didn't see a lot of difference in, in skill set. Uh, I'm sure uh, you know, the one young man is probably a little bit more of a veteran season, been around. Uh, from my understanding, it was more of a, uh, a change because of performance, not because of uh, lack of skill set. So, uh, you know, it, that always creates a, a, a unique situation when you have two quarterbacks playing. But uh, I, I think we'll do a good job of coming up with a game plan. And uh, if there are slight differences in their skill set, uh, you'll probably see that within how we defend them. How close was Case to being able to go on Saturday? And, and it, kind of where does Cole fit in there? Is he trained in both at Sam and Will? Uh, right now, he's spending most of his time at Will. I'm kind of going to your second question first. Uh, still trying to minimize what we're putting on his plate right now. Uh, he's a, he's a second-year freshman. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of, of checks and adjustments that he needs to be aware of, and we're trying to make it as easy as we can because he, stills, he is still a starter on two different special teams for us as well. Uh, you know, James, the decision not to play him was, was really staff, Medical personnel, we came up with it right away after the game against Albany and just try to continue to give him more time to get healthy. Uh, I think if it were a situation where we, it was 
we had to have him. I think he could have played uh, in, in situational football. Uh, but I'm, I'm trying to buy him some time where we can get him healthy, where he can be a, truly an impact, because he is one of our best 11 football players on defense. Sorry, my voice. Um, the preparation for Towson. Um, with a quarterback, the, the gentleman who started last week, a transfer kid, how do you guys go about approaching that film study, balancing out, finding film of him, and staying within Towson's system and what they're looking for? Well, the first thing we're going to take a look at is the two games they've played this year, and, and so you have accurate video evidence of, of what his athleticism like, uh, what, what, what are, what's his demeanor on the field, all the skill set that he brings. Uh, probably later in the week, I anticipate our quality control guys will be reaching out, trying to find video from somewhere else, maybe that can expand our knowledge of him individually. But you know, I, I think Towson has is, is, is been a very successful program. Uh, you know, their film and what they're doing schematically does match up with what we saw in 2019. Um, and so we're going to defend what we see. Uh, of course, we'll try to be prepared for everything, but you, you, you don't want to go chasing a lot of ghosts out there. Uh, we want to make sure that we're sound in, in, in our approach. In regard, how would you evaluate uh, Quincy just in the growth he's made from the young man that you guys recruited to transfer here into who he is and, and what he's been able to show for you guys? Well, he's, he's done a, an excellent job. From the minute he walked on campus, he was bought in. Uh, of course, there, there's some significant differences in the expectations and how the programs operated, and he, he worked through that. But uh, he's a very competitive, very intelligent young man, so uh, that was the, the least of his concerns. Did an outstanding job in the spring of, of relegating himself to the scout team. And, and, and that, that probably uh, is, was more difficult than anyone ever gives him credit for because all of a sudden you were at a – Power five, you're competing for the starting role, and now you're at North Dakota State and you're the scout team quarterback every week. He did an outstanding job. His leadership, his ability to make plays, he started to see glimpses of it uh, slowly. Uh, but over the course of the spring, the summer, fall camp, uh, he is always around the football facility. He, he's watching film. He's, he's, he's picking people's brains. He's involved in the game plan. Um, I think you saw that we're starting to get into more of the, the quarterback run game this week. Again, continuing to expand the playbook, um, not throwing it all at him right now. Uh, I think that will happen in due time over the course of a season. Um, but we want to make sure that we can continue to have him grow in his confidence just like we would in his ability to make plays too. And so he's been, he's been great. First guy I saw as I was leaving the facility on Saturday night, probably around 8 o'clock, he was walking in to make sure he could watch that game as soon as possible. You know, and, and that's a young man that played probably 24, 25 snaps in the first half, but was going to go in there and make sure that he knew everything about how he played. And so that way he can correct things and continue to improve moving it forward. That's played that much football, though. That's that much more mature, that much older to still be siphoning in the playbook a little bit, is that a, a reflection of just how, you know, we hear it all the time, certainly from the NFL, how complex your um, playbook is, or, uh, I mean, I mean, why? Why, with, with all that experience that he has? Well, I think part of it, I think there's a couple reasons why. One, uh, you're talking about a young man who is very competitive, wants to be the best player on the field. Two, uh, it didn't take long for Quincy to realize what the expectation, the standard here are. Um, we've been very fortunate to have outstanding quarterback play uh, dating back, you know, for a long time now. And uh, so I think he, he realizes he's creating his own shoes there. But at, there's some people that are still thinking he's filling other people's shoes. And that's not necessarily accurate, but there is a level of, of probably – pressure he puts on himself, and I use the term pressure because he's prepared for it. Uh, he has great weeks. He's a, he's a great teammate. He's a great pre – he prepares the way you're supposed to. Um, and, and so I, I think all those things kind of combine into why he is the way he is right now. Thrown directly into conference play, obviously in the spring. Mm -hmm. How important have these two games and this game against Towson been to get you ready for Valley play? Well, it was that, that, you know being thrown right into conference play was was extremely unique, especially all of a sudden when you were forced to go on the road and you had no preseason to 
think about can a, can a young man help us on special teams, be a backup in this role or that role? You were limited to 64 right off the bat, and you were going off practice clips. And so it, it did make it a little bit more difficult in the spring to kind of think outside the box. Probably why we played so many freshmen during the course of the spring is we needed to have that sample size. Um, moving forward, just the, the, the value – of playing roughly 80 guys this week, I think will be critical. And it may not be this week or next week or, or two weeks from now that we see the, the benefit, the direct benefits, but it'll be before the year's over. You're going to see guys who gave us a ton of reps. Oscar Benson, young man from Hillsboro, came in there, flew around. At times, maybe wasn't flying in the right direction, but was flying. The energy, the, the urgency of playing Bison defense was there. Gray Zabel. You know, Gray played for us a ton in the spring, coming back from an injury, got a ton of snaps. Jake Rock had a play for us. Mason Miller had a play for us. But now they're getting even more reps. At, but the mind is starting to catch up to what the body's doing, and I think it's going to pay dividends, and we'll continue to create that depth moving forward. Our facility, what are you guys going to do now for practice moving forward? We're going to practice wherever there's any green space available, Jeff. So if your yard's big enough, we'll be over. Um, I, we're going to use the uh, practice soccer field uh, when we need to. It's about uh, roughly uh, two 75-yard fields. Of course, there's Dakota Field. Uh, I think we've worked it out with soccer. I believe they're practicing in the evenings. Uh, the dome will be up. Uh, I think we'll, I know we'll practice in the dome today. Um, but, of course, that's, that's a unique situation because um, they're trying to have other venues and other events in that facility as well. But uh, we'll make it work. How often does that come in? I'm talking about an indoor facility and recruiting and arms races and all that. Oh, I mean, we bring it up. I mean, I think we talk about it when people see the, uh, the diagrams and the pictures uh, right out here in the hallway. Uh, we bring it up with our recruits. When we show them our facilities, uh, we do address it. Uh, I don't think we, we labor over it. Um, there's a lot of other reasons why you want to be a bison uh, besides facilities. But uh, it, it is a positive. I think the... You know, to see the the support, uh, the the size, the sheer magnitude of this facility when you're talking about you know 35, 40 million dollars, um, especially working through a pandemic, uh, I think it's pretty unique, and, and, and not very many athletic departments and or uh, universities could probably pull that off. The Valley teams have access now to indoor facilities, whether it's game or practice. Uh, what's that say for the league in comparison to the rest of the FCS? Well, I think. I think part of it has to do a lot with the region that the league is, is sits in. Uh, we, we, there is a there is a, a, a winner here. Um, you know, a couple of those schools have had those facilities for years. Uh, you talk about South Dakota. You talk about you and I. I mean, they're on campus domes, so they do have access to those. Ours is a little bit unique with it being a shared facility with the city of Fargo. But um, it, it's important year-round development. Uh, I think it shows the the importance of football, but also the importance of intercollegiate athletics at probably all the institutions that make up the Missouri Valley right now. When you looked at Jaden Price recruiting-wise, did you? I know he played quarterback. Did you get the sense of how explosive a playmaker he could be? Granted, he was going to play a different position in college. We, we knew he had great speed, great change of direction. You saw those things in uh, as we watched highlights and game film, change, you know, uh, being dynamic. Uh, probably didn't anticipate him being – as dynamic of a punt returner as he is right now, uh, which is, I mean, he unfortunately should have two touchdowns right now uh, in two games uh, on punt return. But it's one of those things that he's continued to work at. He's out there before practice. He's out there after practice working with our punters, working with the jugs machines, you know, making sure, working with Coach Polly, Coach uh, Morgan to make sure that he's prepared to do this. But it is, uh, it adds another element when you have guys who are willing to make those catches, but there's 10 other guys who have to be engaged, and it's important to them as well. And, and one of the things we talked about yesterday in our staff meeting is on punt D and KOR, our kids who are doing the blocking feel like we can score at any time. These teams are really important right now. And then you saw special teams creating takeaways the other day as well. Our special team play has been really good. We need to continue to lean on it. Um, and so we're going to continue to put a lot of time into it. Remember special teams going back for the spring and now carrying over in your time here? Uh, uh, you know, probably just the volume of returns maybe in a short 
in a short window, uh, I would say, but we've had some really good special teams players here at NDSU, and it's, this isn't the first time we've ever emphasized it. I mean, you can go back, and there's a long list of, of really good uh, special teams players. One you brought it to the house against Sam Houston. Yep. How do you decide who goes out there? Well, it, it, a little bit just on feel. Um, you know, it's, it's unique. You ask about Braylon. Braylon's a better punt returner outside than he is inside. Uh, I don't know. He the the ball gets lost in the in the lights and in the dark ceiling of the Fargo Dome. But when he's outside, he he's he's really good. And so part of it has to do with who, what kind of what kind of drive was were we just on defensively? You know, we're on punt D. All of a sudden, was it a seven eight play drive? And 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 JP's gassed. Well, let's we have a really good Braylon Henderson that can come in and return those. The other guy who's really good at that punt returns as far as back there and catching it is, is Dawson Weber. But we just haven't ever had to get to that situation, and, and hopefully we never do. But um, I think a lot of it has to do with practice. Coach Polly records and is charting all that. But um, so far, it's been effective. Have you copy anything of the travel itinerary from Delaware? I know it's not the same exact, but it's a long trip that you did a couple years ago. We, we will. We'll look at it. It'll be very similar. Uh, you know, our travel itinerary doesn't change much from game to game. The the location, uh, some of the logistics do, but kind of our, our order, our plan seldom does. We will leave a little bit earlier because of the, the hour time change and the three-hour flight, wanting to make sure our guys – and I believe – um, from looking at initial itinerary, it's about an hour drive to the hotel uh, with the anticipation of some traffic. And so we want to make sure we get our guys to the hotel where they can have a little bit of downtime before we ramp back up into meetings before the evening ends. Through his first ever <clears throat> um, NFL touchdown yesterday, you think he, he sh should still be here, all things considered. Just the, the amazing progression from – recruiting him out of Marshall, Minnesota, when, when you guys first saw him here to here he is, 21 years old, through an NFL touchdown. It, it is rather it, hard to believe. You're, you're right. There's times uh, I probably get a little selfish and wish he was still here, uh, it, partially because he was a, a tremendous quarterback, but because he was a great leader and, a, and an outstanding individual. And, his, you know, to be able to still have Bryce be part of the program is, is, is outstanding. But – uh, I know I was busy with, with my typical Sunday trying to wrap up Valpo, dive back into Towson, and I don't know if it was Connor Sanger, one of our quality control, walked in and said, Trey threw a touchdown. I mean, it's like, wow, surreal is that? Uh, I mean, it, no, you never anticipate a, a sophomore in college being the third pick in the NFL draft. Uh, I think there's days Coach Hedberg and I kind of look at each other like, did that really just happen? And then he throws it you know, throws a touchdown in his first game. Um, but it'll be the first of many, I anticipate. Being a three-year starter, just how have you seen him bring along some of the other talent in the safety group? You know, he's done a really good job. There's a clip from Saturday where he's all the way down at linebacker level, and he is physically throwing someone into the right alignment. And we're going to watch that as a clip today because I think it demonstrates what our seniors and what our veterans, the, the leadership and the communication piece that they need to do. Uh, I think it was actually Cole Wisniewski. I mean, he actually grabbed him by the by the back of the jersey and slung him and got him lined up. And that is about as valuable a clip as I'm going to show today because it takes if, – if if only 10 of us are on the, on the same page, there's a chance for a big play. We have to have all 11 on the same page to be successful. It doesn't matter offensively, defensively, or special teams. And so he's done a great job. And he has had a ton on his plate over the course of the last, you know, three, four weeks – but he has done an outstanding job. He's student teaching right now. Um, I'm sure he's the, the coolest student teacher in, in Fargo. Um, but it, it, he's been good. I know he has full days and then gets to practice and puts in his time. Helps him being a student teacher. Well, he knows how I feel now. <laughs> I, think, uh, de dealing with, I think he's in an elementary school right now. And so I think, uh, uh, I think the kids really appreciate him and his energy. Uh, I think they appreciate uh, – a bison being their student teacher. Uh, you know, Michael does a great job of modeling what it looks like. He comes from a football family. Dad's an educator. Mom's a, a, a great lady. And uh, I think he just good role model for kids out there. You have the same or similar feelings towards your offensive line, depth chart, rotation, et cetera, 
after two games as you did kind of going into the season? I think there's seven or eight guys that we can play. Uh, and then I think we kind of have a plan right now. Um, what series during the course of a game we may make that rotation uh, depends maybe on the opponent, depends on the length of the first couple series. But I do feel like there's some guys we can get in, we can spell people, we can save some reps off this, just the physical nature. Because you know, Ross, as well as I do, today's going to be a, a spider practice. Tomorrow's going to be full pads, and every snap's going to look like a train wreck. I mean, it's just the, the line of scrimmage is where we win games. And for us to be able to stay healthy up front and to bring others along that can help us stay healthy, I think will be critical moving forward. But like I said, I think there's seven or eight. Um, and then there's some guys that are probably, you know, inching their way towards being in that count. They, they, you know, Coach Larson's done a really good job of creating a room full of, of guys that are intrinsically motivated, self-starters, and that want to be good. I've said it once, I'll say it a million times, that the Rams emulate everything we want to be as a program. Tough, physical, in-your-face, win-in-the-line-of-scrimmage football team.